talk about security, which is a very important topic when it comes to the internet and AWS in particular, everything that's going along with it. So let's understand, first of all, what exactly are security services? Security services are what we need to put in place to make sure that the data that you have online, whether it's with AWS or anything else, is actually secure. Now, there's a whole bunch of different ways that we can do this, but you're wanting to protect it from just the general public, maybe from your data being available. You also want to make sure you're protecting it from any malicious attacks because some people might be out to steal your data. If you work for a very large company, this could often be the case. They could hold you for ransom. So you need to make sure that all of your data is gonna be secure. You also need to make sure that it's available to the right people, the people who need it. You're not just trying to hide it away, but you've still gotta put in some, a little bit of precaution here. So one of the most popular ways that you can actually secure your data is through this funny little thing called encryption. And there's a couple of different types of encryption. Encryption at rest is a, a popular one. But encryption is basically where you take one line or one piece of data and then you codify it, you run it through a bit of a code, and then it comes out the other end looking like something else. So a very simple encryption would be for every letter, if I wanted to encrypt the word amber, then for every letter, I might just change it to the next one in the alphabet. So that means that A would become B, M would become N, B would become C, and so on. And so then what I'm left with is this encrypted word, which is just my name, but spelt with the next letter on the alphabet. And I'd hand it to someone, and if they knew the key to unlock my encryption, which is I've just used the word after that letter in the alphabet, then they would just reverse it, and then now they've got my secret message. Obviously, that's a really bad encryption <laughs> because anyone can guess it. We are way past that stage now, and we need some really big encryptions, ah, things that computers can't even break, all right? So it's this kind of arms race against people who are trying to attack and break sort of things, and then people who are trying to protect them. So encryption at rest basically means that you're encrypting data when it is stored. So when it is just sitting still, it's hanging out, it's not doing anything, we want to make sure that it's protected there. Then we have that you want to encrypt it in transit. So this is if it is on the move somewhere. We are sending data through our network, it's going on this big journey, and we want to make sure that while it is traveling, it's actually protected and no one's going to grab it. And if they do grab it, then they're not going to be able to understand it because we've encrypted it with our super secret cryptic code and it's going to make it very hard for them to find. So you want to make sure that both of these are done and there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do this but we're going to talk about some security services in AWS. There's a whole bunch of them here. We have Identity and Access Management, IAM, big topic, important if you're doing the Cloud Practitioner exam. Then we have Key Management Service. Then we have our firewalls, our web application firewalls. Amazon Guard Duty, Inspector, and a whole bunch of other ones, which we will get to later on. Let's start it off with our key management service. And this is something that is really useful. All it's doing is generating different keys that we can give to people and say, you get a key, you get a key, and now you can access this data. It's very useful. I think it's a great sort of little tool. And the advantage of this is that it means that only certain users and people can access the data that you want them to access. When we're talking about keys, we're actually talking about exactly what I was saying with the encryption, which is that I'm not giving you a physical key. I'm just telling you the secret to my encryption code. And then you can apply that and now you know how, what my message says. But that's what the key is. I'm going to encrypt it. You're going to have the key. So when I give you to it, you can unlock my message. And wow, what a cool thing to know. <laughs> Next up, we have Shield, AWS Shield. AWS Shield helps to protect our apps against DDoS attacks. What are DDoS attacks? DDoS attacks are distributed denial of service attacks, which basically is when your application gets completely flooded with a whole bunch of different requests. And the idea here is pretty simple, that we're just gonna try and purely overwhelm your application or your website so that it breaks and becomes vulnerable and we can steal it and take all your data or whatever it is that they wanna do. So these DDoS attacks are usually organized by a small number of human beings, but a very large number of bots. And the bots are all out there doing all of the same thing, which is trying to log in or attack your website. 
and then just purely just through force of numbers, they're going to take you down. So you want to make sure that you've got something against this, which is where the AWS Shield comes in. There's a couple of different levels to it. So Shield Standard is what everyone gets. It's at no extra cost and it protects you from the basic DDoS attacks by analyzing traffic as it comes to your site and then basically putting up some shields here and there to stop it, which is really handy. There's also an advanced shield, which is a paid service that basically levels up those kind of protections against DDoS attacks and it's going to enhance your protection for any EC2 instances, load balancing, CloudFront, Route 53, Global Accelerator, all these sorts of things. Then we have web application firewalls. Web application firewalls I like to think of as an actual wall and there's all these little soldiers patrolling the wall and they're making sure that no one is coming through that gate or through that wall without them knowing about it. They're like a little guard at the entrance to your server or whatever it is that you're putting up. And what they're basically checking for is are you coming from a blocked address? If something comes in and they're saying, all right, where are you coming from? And that person says, oh, I'm from this particular IP address. And they go, oh, sorry, you've been blacklisted. You are on our bad box. Turn around and off you go. You can't come in. And then if someone else comes in and they say, look, this is where I'm coming from. This is my IP address. And then the web application firewall is going to check them. And it's going to say, oh, John, hi, come on in. No problem. You can come on in. No problem at all. Very useful service. Amazon Inspector is next. Amazon Inspector is like this helpful little guide that's going to just give you advice about your AWS setup and say, hey, I think that you should be doing this. Why don't you try this? That's looking pretty sketchy. That's looking pretty weak. Like you could really build this up. So it helps to run tests to tell you where the vulnerabilities are in your AWS work or your AWS services. And then it's going to give you a description of all of the different issues that it found and some recommendations of how you can fix them. Of course, at the end of the day, you're still responsible for the security in AWS for whatever you set up. Make sure that you're using this tool and actually taking what it says a bit seriously. Next up, we have guard duty. Guard duty is like your threat detection in your account activity. And if it finds something that's a bit of an alert, then it's going to tell you about it. Make sure that you know. Now, you might be thinking this is similar to Inspector. What's guard duty doing? Inspector is trying to prevent issues from happening. It's telling you, here's where your things are weak, like you should really build this up. Whereas guard duty is like, there's an attack right now. We need to move, handing out all of the ammunition, let's go. Whereas the inspector is more of a prevention. The guard duty is more of the alarm. <laughs> Thank you for joining me in this video. It's been a lot of fun. Happy learning. Till next time.